Lady Julia, or your tomb for your own so a baby D. Nasset, a Santimia, him and one dance. A tribute by a tomb force wife, Lady Julia. Read by Cathy, monitor, Madam Amma Bewe, monitor, Madam Amma Bewe. To my sweet mother in law, tribute by Lady Julia Osei Tutu. Consort of Osu, Otumfo Osei Tutu II. The concept of mother-in-law seems to carry a bit of a negative connotation with some women. I was fortunate to have had in Nane Fia Kobise Wampim, a perfect mother-in-law devoid of such a trait. From the very beginning of my marriage to Otumfo Osei Tutu II, I dreaded to the core my first introduction to Nanahima, as we all affectionately called her. I knew I would not just be meeting any mother-in-law, but one who happened to be no meaner person than the Asante Hima. Secondly, I had heard that my Achim heritage would definitely be an issue for her and the elders who would object to a tomb for marrying an Achim woman. When I eventually met her, I felt totally accepted. She eased all the anxiety I had harbored and she became my other mother. I believe she was more interested in my character than where I came from. She rather wondered whether I would be a good partner for her son whom she was so passionate about, and who was always her top priority. Nanahima immediately took me under her wing and helped me settle into what was going to be a different and fairly challenging lifestyle for me. I remember a visit from her in the very first week of moving to Kumasi. On hearing Nanahima had sent some of her attendants to see me, my mind went flying in several different directions as I tried to guess what the reason for this visit could be. I had been told all sorts of stories by people who claimed to know the kind of life I would face after marrying into such a sacred, huge, and very traditional institution. So I was easily intimidated. To my surprise and delight, the ladies were carrying baskets with all sorts of pots and pans, and they informed me that Nana Hima had sent me some fufu and soup, as she realized I had probably not been able to organize my kitchen yet, and was most likely missing some good home cooking. The soup, I discovered to my delight, was ebunebunu, with huge snails, bush meat, assorted dried fish, etc., to welcome the Achim lady. Nanahima's soup, as I am sure all can imagine, was special. As soon as I saw it, I knew I had come home. This was followed a few days later with a toh and the accompaniments of pear and kobe, prepared in the typical Asante way. Thus started a ritual whereby various mouth-watering soups and other Asante dishes were alternatively delivered to me twice every week. In this way, the void of the loss of my own mother's soup was immediately filled. To have my mother-in-law and someone in her exalted position take such a personal interest in my well-being was truly humbling and heartwarming. I began to wonder if Nana Hima and my biological mother had not been close in the pre-existence. As I settled in the royal circles, and as was expected, I would make mistakes. When I did, Nana Hima would always defend me before sending for me and pointing me in the right direction. This was a true mother who would cover the mistakes of her child and then guide him or her on the right path. An interesting example of this 
was when I would go around without using the third piece or cover cloth of my cover and slit, oblivious of the anxiety I was causing. When Nanahima was told, and knowing that this was probably a new thing for me, she was quick to defend me, arguing that I did not necessarily have to wear the third piece if I wasn't used to it. I could just drape it over my arm or shoulder, as is the fashion now. She then corrected me gently that whatever the case, I should always carry the third piece on me. After this, we had quite a lengthy discussion on fashion do's and don'ts, and it was fascinating to observe how someone who had had such a traditional upbringing was still so open-minded and understood that times were changing, and so there was the need for me to be accommodated in certain situations. In any other case, I am sure a lecture with the usual telling off, most likely behind one's back, as they say, would have taken place, but not with Nanahima. I never heard one harsh word from her. She treated me like one of her own. For the various traditional festivals and funerals at which I had to wear dancing crane, she would always send someone to inquire if I had the right cloth or if I needed help. And she would always have a wide variety of clothes sent to me from which to make my selection. As I said, I have heard women telling mother-in-law stories, some funny, some not so much, and some quite dreadful. I also have tons of stories I could tell, except that, thankfully, they were all edifying. I considered Anahima's passing as the homegoing of one of God's most precious gifts to me. I will always remember the advice she gave me, particularly the life lessons she taught me. The rejoicing, merrymaking, and drumming on the birth of my children were very special. She personally supervised the performance of all the traditional rites and rituals that had to be made to welcome them. The interest she took in my projects and NGO, appreciating the times were changing, and so my role as ordinary would be slightly different, are worth noting. She gave her blessing for me to be a bit more visible and active in public. She was such a wise and gracious woman and I am glad I took her advice, for it has definitely been one of the reasons for my successful life among Asante royalty. Nanahima's relationship with Otumfo was just beautiful to watch. The total picture of her, as I saw it, was someone who lived her Christian life, loved her culture, which she cherished, and was deeply fond and protective of Otumfo, on whom she doted and embraced her family and her people. I will never forget the numerous occasions she would send for me to inquire about Otumfo's well-being, asking why he had adjudicated for so long on a particular day, and encouraging me to advise him against such lengthy sessions. She would give directions on who could and could not do certain things for Tumfo, who to talk to in her household if I needed any Asante delicacies for Ohne or his friends, and advice on certain things or people she was not comfortable with. She loved her son exceedingly, which love was equally reciprocated by him. Her wholehearted acceptance and love of me, I know, was due to the love and respect for Tumfo, which I believe made her ready to accept whoever his choice of a partner was to be and agreed to love and unflinchingly protect me the way she did to him. I am very much aware that my best friend in the whole world, my love, my rock, 
has lost the woman who shaped him into who he is today, who loved, cared, and protected him. And I hope I can be half the woman she was for him. Nana Himma will be sorely missed, but never forgotten. It is a sort of a joke that every wife gets annoyed by her mother-in-law. But what wouldn't I give to have mine around for a little longer? She possessed so much beauty, grace, love, and patience that I find it a great pity. She was already well advanced in age when I came into her life. To me, she will always be the amazing woman who gave me a husband far better than anyone deserves. And I will forever be grateful that I was a part of her life. Nane fia kobi sewam pim the second. Santi hima. Demri fedri. Dre. Asepa nanti ye. Oba time pa. Why ye biam pa? Kodru fie jojo jo. Nane fia kobi sewam pim the second. Asante hima.